What's the auditor's responsibility with regard to supplementary information when doing a financial statement audit? Supplementary information is presented outside the basic financial statements, like a schedule of investments or a schedule of properties owned by a real estate company. The key is this information is not considered necessary for the financial statements to be fairly presented in conformity with the framework. So remember, the auditor is not obligated to report on supplementary information and will do so only when engaged by the client. So the CPA who audited the financial statements might be asked to report on supplementary information. If that CPA did not audit the financial statements, they wouldn't be able to report on supplementary information. So you can't just report on the supplementary information. You'd have to do the financial statement audit if you want to report on supplementary information. And the auditor must have rendered an unmodified opinion or qualified opinion on those financial statements in order to be eligible to report on supplementary information. So what does that mean? If the auditor rendered an adverse opinion or disclaimer on the financial statements, then you couldn't report on the supplementary information. It's kind of like with the key audit matters, right? You can report on key audit matters if you give it unmodified or a qualified opinion. But if you give a disclaimer or adverse opinion, you can't report on key audit matters. Same thing goes for supplementary information. The supplementary information either accompanies the financial statements or must be readily available. Readily available means without further action by the audited entity. That means the user with minimal effort could go to the internet and just pull down the supplementary information. The auditor may issue a combined report or separate reports. A combined report would involve one report, two opinions, one opinion on the financial statements, one opinion on whether the supplementary information is presented fairly in relation to the financial statements taken as a whole, or they could do two separate reports, one report on the financial statements, the other report on the supplementary information. It's up to the auditor. If the supplementary information is determined to be misstated in relation to the financial statements, auditor will discuss that with management and propose revision of the supplementary information. If management does not revise the supplementary information, the auditor should modify the opinion on the supplementary information or withhold the separate report on the supplementary information. Let's try this. A CPA may audit the financial statements and report on supplementary information unless the opinion on the financial statements is a qualified or adverse. No, you can report on the financial statements and the supplementary information if you have a qualified opinion, but not an adverse opinion. So A is wrong. Qualified or disclaimer, no, same reason, right? You can report on the both as long as there's a qualified opinion, but not a disclaimer. C, adverse or disclaimer, yes, because the CPA may report on both unless the opinion on the financial statements is adverse or disclaimer. So letter C is the answer. Which of the following is correct when an auditor of financial statements also reports on supplementary information? Now, the specific wording of the report on supplementary information would go something like this. Our audit was conducted for the purpose of forming an opinion on the financial statements as a whole. Such information is the responsibility of management. The information has been subjected to auditing procedures. In our opinion, the information is fairly stated in all material respects in relation to the financial statements as a whole. So that's how the auditor gives the opinion on the supplementary information. The wording is, and the exam will require you to know this, fairly stated in all material respects in relation to the financial statements as a whole. So we're not giving an opinion directly on the supplementary information. Instead, we're giving an opinion as to whether the supplementary information is fairly stated in all material respects in relation to the financial statements as a whole. And that's how it's tested. Look for that choice. The answer choice that says the information is fairly stated in relation to the financial statements as a whole. If there's a separate report on supplementary information, the report doesn't have to be restricted. Remember we said we could have two reports or we can have a combined report. There's no need for restriction. These reports could be general use. 
If supplementary information in a document accompanying the basic financial statements has been subjected to auditing procedures, the auditor may include in the auditor's report on the financial statements an opinion that the accompanying information is fairly stated in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. No, because generally accepted auditing standards does not have any requirement as to how supplementary information should be presented. B, conformity with generally accepted accounting principles. No, GAAP does not have any rule as to how supplementary information is presented. Remember, this is outside the basic financial statements. This is supplementary information. So the auditor's opinion is that the information is fairly stated, C, in all material respects in relation to the financial statements as a whole. So letter C is correct. We don't report directly on the supplemental information. That's why A and B are out. Instead, we report on whether the supplemental information is fairly stated in relation to the financial statements as a whole. And that's why in order to report on the supplemental information, the CPA must also have audited the financial statements. Which of the following is correct when an auditor of financial statements also reports on supplementary information such as a schedule of investments? Think you know? Leave the answer in the comments section. And then don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with reporting or any part of the CPA audit exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com. Get yourself on I-75 where the right teacher makes all the difference. Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference.